forever. Dog. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the American Arts and Culture Review. My name is Whitmer Thomas, and I'm joined, as always, by my number one co-host, Clay Taylor. <laughs> Today, today on the podcast, we'll discuss the Firefest documentaries. Uh, we'll just dis- and we have our number one guest today, Mitra Jahari, and also our number one audience member, Rodney Berry. Well, this is the American Arts and Culture Review. I, I'm happy that you're listening and uh, have fun. <laughs> hey, you are getting really good at that. No, yeah. I actually. I it's stopped. almost like you know how long the song is. I stopped it before the hit. Which is that sort of yeah, because at this point you you're used to that hit and you want to change it up. That's jazz, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. this kind of is like jazz, baby. Hey, what are we doing today? Well, let me go ahead and address the elephant in my room, and that's Mitra's my girlfriend. Yeah. That's so cool. This is the elephant you brought? Yeah. <laughs> I've been telling Clay all day that I was bringing an elephant, and the elephant is Mitra. Yeah. And why uh, is that? Well, because Mitra just, I think... Wait, wait, what is... It? Explain to me what she is first. Well, f- play some really romantic music with the I jazz like, pop wait, tune. I, I like where those going. Me- so, uh, the, just to let, let everyone know before we get into it, this is I Did Ick Out, a really romantic song. And this is probably the most romantic song. You'll know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait it, gets, it, it really gets into it. And went three, two, one... Oh. Well, Mitra, me, <laughs> me and you met. We met at a show. Uh, we were at an opera, mm-hmm. and we were watching the singers. Yeah, La Boheme. Uh, uh, yeah, um, La, at La Boheme. <laughs> and you had popcorn, and you uh, dropped it everywhere because you're known for being clumsy. Yeah, I got wet hands. Yeah. <laughs> So I got my popcorn from La Boheme, and I wanted to watch those sing, and then the wife saw Wit across the room because I dropped the stuff, and then um, all the ushers got really upset. Mm -hmm. And then we locked eyes across the room because Wit also dropped popcorn. Yeah. And that's when I knew, well, she, we both dropped popcorn. You dropped popcorn, you went hubba hubba. I went, I saw her bending over to get the popcorn from the front, and I went, I, I, I. Yeah. And because I have a 360 whale tail. Yeah. Ooh. She ha- she's wearing a thong like music? so high up that I could see it from the front. And I knew it was a thong because you know that's oh, how yeah. tight it was. Yeah. That, anyway, so I, that's so cool. I walked directly to Mitra and I started shouting at her all of my favorite moments <laughs> in the movie Boogie Nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right into my throat. And uh, she loved it. And that's it when hurt. I, yeah, and that's when I knew she had to be girlfriend. Wow, that's romantic. So then he told me that I was girlfriend, and I said, okay. And then I moved to Los Angeles. Uh-huh. Um, I was living in US. yeah, I was living uh-huh, in yeah. South Dakota at the time. Yeah. So I just picked up, and the next Why day I was. Wasn't cheap. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't cheap. Oh, yeah. It cost a lot of money. I had mm-hmm. to borrow a lot of money. I haven't paid it back yet, but I. Well, it's I, worth it. Yeah. Well, my dream is to one day hire Mitra on one of Clay and I's projects as like some sort of job that she right. could do to make money. <laughs> well, I pretty like much like a girl job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I pretty much worked my way up from unpaid intern to unpaid PA, and then Wit said at some point, if you guys ever like make some money, then I can be a paid PA. Wit's well, the we, of well, what was that, Clay? You're the bravest of the group. Yeah. Well, I am brave. Yeah, because I am promising a job right now that I secretly know is probably never going to exist. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> It's yeah. This is a comedy podcast. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what did we see today, baby? Oh uh, well, we all today watched um, the Fire Festival documentaries. This is hot. They are hot. Pretty uh, hot. Like fire. What's our, okay? So let, let's like really get into this and really um uh, uh let's get let's start off this review of the thinking movie. Today. So what type of music should uh, I play to get people excited for this uh, the hot ass movie called Fire? Well, do you? But really, we got to know which one do y'all want to start with? Hulu or Netflix? I mean, I saw the Hulu one first. Yeah. That great, me too. Yeah, you guys just and went. we did watch it at Clay's house. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me play. We some all watched house. it together. Play yeah. something that reminds like, you of home. I'll play some '90s house. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's okay. so that's so nineties. Yeah. Alright, so this movie opens with a guy, his name is Jack Whitaker. What's his name? Jack no, that's Whitaker. it. I think it's that's Jack probably Whitaker. It. He's this big guy who looks old but is young. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then what happens? 
Well, pretty much with the whole he's movie. Like Benny Button? Yeah, he's like Benny Button. Okay. <laughs> he like insists that he's like 15. Yeah. Yeah. For the whole the movie. hottest age there is. Yeah. Okay. And he's bouncing around and he's got all this money. And he pokes holes. He's poking holes and left and right. He pokes that sounds dirty. Yeah. Like, he's 15. He's allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and he has the body of a million year old, <laughs> but he's young. Yeah. And he's bouncing around and trying to get money to do apps and have credit cards. Right. Right? Yeah, he invents the credit card. He invents some new type of credit card for teens like him. <laughs> teens who have million year old bodies, but are, have teenage brains. Yeah. Uh, so what is this? What? Um, uh, what, what does this credit card Well, it's called the Magneto, and... <laughs> Did you get me right? It's the Magnesis. Uh, it's pretty, oh, so, okay, Magnesis. Yeah. That, yeah, okay. Magneto's okay, so, close, though. So the card, what does it do? It's a card that looks fancy, but it actually is just a debit card. And then you go into a room when you have the card. Yeah, you can go to a house. Yeah, if you have the card, you get to Let go to a room <laughs> where you can hang out with other people who have the card. Yeah, and, and then, everybody in the room has to sweat a lot. Yeah, yeah everyone it's sweats. so hot. And eventually, in that room, you're joined by Ja Rule, who talks <laughs> is that, to you. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. I think that... That's like one of the benefits of the card, is Ja Rule I, will come and talk to you. You get to touch Ja Rule. And surprisingly, Ja Rule is... Ja Rule number one. You get to touch Ja Rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first Ja Rule? That's the first Ja Rule. That's the first Ja Rule of my visa. is... You get to touch Ja Rule. <laughs> Okay. Draw rule number two. Four line. <laughs> and so basically it's really funny because there's all these Michael, Michael, what's this guy's name again? Fred, uh, Frankie, it, Frankie. Is this the Benny Button? No, what's the boy's there's name? Benny Bu- okay, basically there's all these different Benny Buttons who are young people with very old bodies <laughs> who then get to see Ja Rule who's older but has young body. Yeah. And that's yeah. the number one thing I notice. It's a counterbalance to the bodies. Yeah. yeah. And so that meets them meet in the middle. Right. Um, so Ja Rule and his friend, Michael Rappaport or whoever the yeah, guy's name is. Yeah, that's probably his name. They, uh, they decide Rappaport, to start some a- Irish. <laughs> yeah. They decided to, with a jazz pop tinge, Okay, please. here I go. They decide to start an app that helps book celebrities for parties. Right. Called Fire. 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 And then they get to go, they all go to the, they all go to the water. Yeah, then they yeah. go find some water. <laughs> Absolutely. And they play in it with their friends. For yeah. a long time. They, with, get the, they get the babes. Well, they have a documentary film crew fo- Go mm-hmm. and film and hot girls. Models. We're t- what are some of the hot girls or models we're talking about? We're talking about um, Ki- Kindle. Be- oh, great. I'm Bella funny. Hadid? Is yeah, and don't try to say it quietly or else Clay will get too horny. <laughs> oh, sorry. Try like to him. say it quiet enough so I won't hear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still horny. Oh, no, too loud. <laughs> uh, Emily Rajatatashki. I can tell Clay's too horny My right now. My horny meter is going higher and higher. I'm Um. All right, let me play some. Courtney, what's Courtney Cox. Let me get my dog. <laughs> Courtney Cox was there. I think she was there. <laughs> yeah. I want to get unhorny. They met the piggies. Oh, oh, and then they go. They are. They go, they go swimming with the piggies. They swim with the pigs. <laughs> and then the pigs start. They old mob threat. <laughs> they huh? what? You're going to swim with the piggies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So they go swimming with the piggies, which used to be a mob tactic. But they're, like, reclaiming it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It used to be scary. Now it's fun. Free the nipple, swim with the pig. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to make you swim with the piggies. Oh, boy. Yeah. It used to be scary, though. In the the 30s, during Prohibition, swimming with the piggies was, like, the worst possible thing that could ever happen to you. Back when Al Stallone was brutal in the streets of New York, he was having people swimming with the piggies left and right. That's why he went to Alcatars. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah, Al Stallone was in Chicago, forced people to swim with the piggies. Uh, I don't need to say it twice. Mutra just said it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, sometimes when your girlfriend says something, you just have to repeat it. I like to repeat (laughs) the the things that, that... that's mostly Mitra and I's relationship is she'll say something, I'll say it louder, and I'll typically 
get some sort of financial <laughs> relief for it. Yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, my fault because I'm not talking loud enough. It is your fault. That's what boyfriends okay. are for. You have a voice, and you should you should yell when you talk, or else you won't be heard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, then they go swimming with the piggies. They decide to start a festival. They book all the acts, most notably Blink-182 and Ooh, pop pop, Migos. Yeah, oh, don't please. Worry, Migos sure is going to be there. And um, Kanye. Good music. What is good music? This that's, is good that's music That's like right Kanye. Here. So, like, imagine, okay, imagine this. Kanye's, like, brand. Kanye is about to go up on stage, <laughs> and he goes, everyone, it's Kanye West. Give it up. For Kanye, here he comes. So, like, Big Sean would be there. Big Sean goes, what's up, y'all? That's exactly what Big Sean would say. Yeah. Okay. So that's what good music is. Is Big Sean and Kanye? Yeah, he's like one of the guys. Yeah. Where do I learn this? Uh, you can learn this. Just yeah. You just web. You just get on the web. Um, Meacher, do you know about that? Your way to beautiful girl. (laughs) Is that Big Sean? Yeah, it's Big Sean. Really? No, it's (laughs) Ron Kingston. (laughs) How's the rest of the song go? But I didn't really think it was. (laughs) How's the rest of the song go? (laughs) Your way to beautiful girl. That's why it'll never work. You had me suicidal, suicidal, and you say it's. Over, damn all these beautiful girls. Wow. They always trying to do your dirt. All right, I think you should stop or else we'll have to pay the royalties. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's. It, it's so dead on, I feel like so they might think it's the real recording. So these honeys are swimming with the piggies. They got Blink 22 <laughs> playing that classic pop up. Uh, so then they have to. Uh, well, what did I do? What, so this is this. The, so the festival's going right now, and it's going great. No. Uh, no, and then we start Perfect to learn wrong. there's some financial things going on. That's money. And this is where Rod. Yeah. Finance, finance yeah. Finances is money. Okay, let me play some. So, so he has booked all these bands, and uh, the festival has not started yet. He booked the bands, he's selling the tickets, and nobody, everyone's so excited about it. It yeah. looks so fun. There's babe models there. He booked the pigs. The pigs are going to be there. Blink-182, good music. Migos is going to be there. But it's it's not ready. Here's what I would do. I would say, here's everyone who's going to be here. Here's how much the tickets are. And you buy the tickets, and I, use, I would use, th- this is what I would do. I would uh, have the bands. Have the bands be on a piece of paper, like a flyer or something. That's have brilliant. Have that flyer be public to the mm-hmm, public mm-hmm. and have a money value to the festival. Yeah. Then, it sounds crazy. I'm going to have that money, uh, have that fest cost money. And you have to pay for the money before you go. Yeah. And so I yeah, have yeah, the yeah. money before you go. I put, have the That's money. what happened. I have the money and I put the money all in one group, in one pile of money. Count the money so I know how much I have. Right? Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, you and count then it every time. I take the money and I and I split it up in certain parts. One would be to pay the bands. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Another uh-huh. one would be pay for the location. Right. And another one would be pay for the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> and you and then you spend the money. The things you need. How much are we giving the pigs? <laughs> well you're giving the, you're giving the pigs the piggy scale. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so the scale for the pigs. I don't know. Keep going. I'm not a piggy bank. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, and afterwards, the, uh, the people would come, and they go, oh, "Look at all this crap! Look at all this money that's already been spent. This is my money to spend." And they enjoy the festival. Blinkway Two plays "Who's My Dad Again," and then everyone <laughs> rocks out. Their famous song. Their favorite song. That's blasphemy. Don't. What'd you say to me? That's blasphemy. Say that to my face. Okay, I'm too afraid. Say, say that's blasphemy. Okay. What was that? Little kiss. <laughs> uh, you're kissing me on my hand. <laughs> It's nice, thank you. Um, so, so, so he, so, uh, just skip to the end. I'll do it for you. He does all that, and it goes well. Huh? N- he doesn't do that. What? No, it's a scam. Huh? It's all a spoof. Basically, he's getting the money, right, but it's a classic. Play. It's a classic Christopher Nolan Dark Knight moment where it turns out the Joker's burning Burn the, the money. money. Yeah. Uh, and and then the cuckoo clock goes cuckoo. Yeah, and that's when you start to realize. And then uh-oh. he hits his head with a rubber mallet, and he jumps on his and his he hops on his butt. 
and he goes, yeah. um, I don't remember how And a big butt. welt grows in the center of his head and like sprouts through his hair. But then you can throw rings on it. That's true. Uh huh. And that is the one benefit. It's like but carnival. He, so he makes the money back by going from carnival to carnival. Well, he could have. That's my spinoff. Yeah, that's Mitra's spinoff. And that is the Hollywood version of this story. Uh huh. Okay. But he didn't do that, and now he's in jail. Mm hmm. For and, seven years. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of lost here. Me, so he's gonna get me, out of the out of jail when I he's 21. I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> yeah. I haven't, I haven't written anything in a while. Well, we have a whole nother fire documentary we have to talk about. Okay. Well, you we can catch me up on this. The last thing I wrote was draw roll number two. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. happens after that? Oh, um, they do the festival. The two. Oh, this is the Hulu one. Let's go to the Netflix one. Let's maybe play some House of Cards. The Hulu one is more about the money stuff. Yeah. Okay. The finance. And the Netflix one is made by Fuck Jerry and Fuck Jerry. What's to me? Fuck Jerry is a guy Kiss who's... Kiss your mouth with that mouth? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Fuck Jerry is a guy <laughs> who is known for his online stuff. Classic. He's really good at his online stuff. Yeah, yeah. he's... Yeah, I mean, he has the memes, he has... He has the memes, he has... He has the, the funny pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... That's his main talent is that online stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's classic. And Fuck Jerry was hired by Firefest to run their social media, which is to post pictures of Emily Ratajkowski with a logo Great. of I'm the fire again. logo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that the impossible job. <laughs> and they sell orange. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. To also get people to sell orange. What is this orange? It's well, there's orange, so people have squares on their computer on their phone, and they put the orange on there so everybody can talk about okay, the fire. Okay, let me stop you right there. Okay. That is literally the smartest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, it's called marketing. Well, the number one reason it's orange is because fire orange. Oh. If that makes any sense at all. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me write that down. Yeah. Uh, so Mitra knows about that kind of stuff, and she's really good at talking about it because she's really good at um, online stuff. Yeah, your dad told me that you're good at the <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> yeah, so my dad and I are really tight. Like, we, he's, you know, we basically, like, we share a bunk bed. And <laughs> okay, let me play some music for this. It's some dad music. Yeah. Well, because it's tough. Because, like, so, you know, as you all know, I've been working as your unpaid intern for your the last come, eight your months. Your dad does seem worried sometimes. He's worried because, you know, he can't work because he fell. And uh -huh. Oh, he so fell off the bed like a monkey. <laughs> He's yeah. on the top. He bumped yeah. his head. Well, because yeah. he wouldn't stop jumping on the bed, and Mitra's always telling him to stop. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I've, I've been working as your unpaid intern for a really long time, but mm -hmm. I'm also working as a nurse at night, but it's hard because Wit has his penthouse that I have to pay for, and then yeah. I have my apartment with my dad that I have to pay for, mm -hmm. but he, keeps fall he insists on sleeping on the top bunk, <laughs> so I had to go, I had to get the I had to get the floors insulated, so that costs a lot of money to have padding on the floor. Well, you have your nurse job. I have my nurse job, <laughs> right. so, you know, I have some money, so I got the floor all fixed up, but, you know, I'm working a lot of hours, so I'm spending a lot of money on caffeine pills so I can stay up so I can be like learn mm -hmm. about the industry biz and the trades from you guys mm -hmm. because you guys you know I just want to learn how to turn the camera off on but that's you know that's <laughs> well, not intern job and it's well. been hard recently because uh, Mitra has to go to my shows and transcribe right so I film the shows and then I transcribe what's set and then I'm not allowed to offer any opinions and I have to remain completely objective uh, because I'm just the intern but I have to type out the sets well once you do stand up on a TV show in Australia I told you then you can and start taking me notes. No, I know. I'm not asking to do anything other than transcribe. It's a privilege to transcribe. <laughs> and okay. your dad has said you're really good at computer. My dad thinks I'm really good at computer yeah. because so so my dad has computer. If, uh -huh. if you, you know. Let me play some, okay, let me play some really technical secure that's made with a computer. So my dad has a calculator and we basically plug that up to the computer and he can he can kind of, like, he has a re regular calculator but when we cook it up to the computer that he has access to a lot more equations and numbers that he didn't have before. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So he kind of does that all day because he doesn't have a job anymore because he fell. Right. Tragic. And that's why Mitra's good at online. Yeah. I have to be good at online because my dad has a lot of questions and Wit also has a lot of things that he needs to look up. He has to look up Wit Thomas, Whitmer Thomas, <laughs> Whitmer Alexander Thomas, <laughs> Wit Alexander Thomas, yeah. IMDB, IMDB Pro. Where's the star meter? Star meter is at um, <laughs> 400,000. <000. laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> it's better than 500,000. Oh, that's true. That's where you used to be. <laughs> well, and that's actually, that's part of what I'm good at computer is that I go in and I add credits. <laughs> <laughs> 
and, I had... and then I give good reviews for Wit's performances in movies. <laughs> this really took a turn, and I feel like we should get back to the fire fest. <laughs> Wit's having fun. <laughs> And then I le- I leave good comments on YouTube. That's where all those comments are coming from. Love me. Yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah, my girl works for me. So <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I got the. <laughs> what? You go out there and do what? I get on your Yelp page and I say yes. I'm one of the few comics to have his own Yelp. <laughs> Yelp. Well, <laughs> well, it's a, uh, it's well? called a Yelp because I wasn't allowed on Yelp because my name is Wit and yeah. Wit makes with Yelp as well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So what are you giving this movie? That first one, a 10 out of 10. And the reason is because they go into the financial stuff. Uh-huh. And I like that. Yeah. What about you, Mitra? Oh, um, for me, it's tough because they had the pigs in it, so I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm the same as Mitra, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The pigs in it, 10 out of 10. It's easy. <laughs> it's obvious to anybody. Yeah. If you want to know what I think, I actually wrote down uh, what the movie is and what's my thoughts on it. And I will do that right now. Uh, so, what, what, uh, what type of music, would, when you were watching this, what type of music was coming to your brain? Some, like, party kind of anthem, gonna be young forever uh-huh. kind of fun music like that with a jazz pop tinge. Okay, so arcade. Okay. <laughs> Pull that up, and here you go. Um, Fry. Um, 2018 Fry. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Clay Tam. This is my review of Fry. Um, <laughs> it's hot to be 15. That's what everyone wants. Draw rule number one. You can touch draw rule. Draw rule number two. Don't be someone with a pig. And finally, um, with a nurse job, you could afford pretty much anything. It's truly a worry for your lifestyle. <laughs> So for all that, um, I give a uh, fire uh, fry uh, Hulu fry Netflix t- a, a perfect ten out of ten. If you think of else, you can't get any better than that. So it's a perfect documentary. Yeah. So all together, ten out of ten, 10 is forty. Uh huh. But there's which two tens in each. F minus. Right. Ten. So that brings it to eighty. Eighty. Which is a B minus. B minus. Perfect. Oh, perfect. That's as good as it gets. Yeah. So we didn't exactly touch on the Netflix one. We only said that it was made by fuck jerry yeah. uh-huh. who's internet man and good at internet stuff yeah. but one thing that is fun with the fuck jerry <laughs> one is they go into the color orange which oh, yeah. is yeah. fire that is fire because orange is fire orange is a lot of stuff like sunshine but orange sun is, is fire oh the sun is made of fire and orange is juice the juice uh-huh and orange and table where we are and the table in front of us right now is orange we'll send you we'll do a pic of that yeah we'll have to do a pic (laughs) yeah um but there's other orange things and there and there is a third fire movie that hasn't really been mentioned in the discussion of fire Fire. movies and that is the film uh it's a korean film Uh, called burning right and Burning is about a guy. What's it burning about? It's kind well, of it's about, about the fire festival. Okay, wait, okay, so give me, give, uh, Ron, that's a, that sounds like a damn lie. Uh, is it? Uh, can well, you this up? is it not? I mean, it could. We don't necessarily know, but if you watch them all consecutively, it's very easily like pretty it's obvious. Like freaking, we don't, it's like that freaking glass movie where you don't know what you're watching until the end. Yeah, we don't want to give anything away, wait, basically. Okay. But uh, I mean, yeah, okay. So let me Spoiler some, alert. Let me, okay, let me play Burning some, is hey, easily. Really a uh, prequel to, to the Fire Festival documentaries. So, and prove that to me by explaining. Okay, well, it, it opens easy. up with a guy who's like a farmer guy who's walking around, and he runs into a hot girl, like from okay. Fire uh-huh. Festival. Exactly. Like, just okay. okay. Um, and she's marketing. She's marketing stuff with her b- body dancing. Yeah, by being hot. Like but, they were marketing. And I only like really they were marketing the pig. Yeah, right. like they marketed the pigs. And, and he was a farmer, and that's where you find those pigs. And I at. only really noticed that know that this girl is hot because Rod told me. Hey. So right. Just he like, has a girlfriend, so he doesn't know if a girl is hot or not. Right. And Rod kept saying, that girl is so oh, fuckable oh my hot. God. <laughs> oh, I would just, she is, if oh, I was God. near her. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
I do remember that. I don't think of things like that. That is exactly how I talk, and that's what I would say. I will say, we did all see the movie together, and when that girl came up, I did hear Rod go, and I did say, I did go to Rod, and I go, Rod, you need a wood. Yeah, Rod actually had his popcorn in his lap, and he asked me if I wanted any popcorn. But I was like, sure, but then he wouldn't take the popcorn away from his lap, and it was really weird. Because he had his pecker in there. No, it's the popcorn is warm on my lap. It's cold okay, in the movie Rod. theater. You guys. When was that? That was. Uh, I would have gone. <laughs> well, oh, you, you were, were at work. Yeah, yeah you yeah, were you nursing were. for sure. It was okay. after. It was. You were nursing. It was during what we call what Wit calls boy time, which I don't understand. <laughs> well, it's where my boys and I all go hang out, and my boys get horny for me because I don't like to get horny because I have girlfriend. He saves it for marriage. Yeah. Well, I save it for, yeah, so I make sure, I take my boys and we all go watch horny stuff, Uh and they kind of explain to them the horny feelings that they're feeling. Yeah. Right. Because I don't feel that. That's reserved for my employee slash girlfriend. (laughs) I I lean over, I go, I am red hot right now. And I ask him to explain in detail why, and he'll say something like, It's because of that fat ass. (laughs) That's exactly what Clay would say. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's hey now let's get back let's go back into okay, the movie. Okay, so theater. he runs into the, I take him this girl. Hear that? Yeah, you take me outside. Well, Clay always in the middle of the film. He always goes out to get his mid-movie his burger. burger, right? Of course. And at, but this specific well, because I transcribed this podcast too. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know about, knows I know about mid-movie this burger. Yeah, you know about halfway through. I go. Damn it, I'm hungry for another <laughs> damn burger. And there's so many horny things I have to fill wit in. So I go, wit, come outside. Let me tell you about this. Fat ass and this is actually one of the first time Clay's let me um, experience the mid movie burger with him. I didn't get the burger because there's only there's only usually one burger, burger. in a movie theater. <laughs> And Clay always goes, he always, gets he always kind of has his eye on that burger. Right. And at this point, he's very known in the film going community that that burger is typically for me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. So I don't have it, to say anything. So if you do go to a movie theater and there's no burger, just for our audience, that's why. Clay's been there. Clay's um, been there. Yeah. Or Wait. it's reserved for Clay. So Clay goes out, he explains to me the horny stuff. And then we go back in, <laughs> and now this guy is hanging out with this girl, and it turns out that they have known each other since they were little kids, and the girl had some plastic surgery. That's why she doesn't that's why she looks a little bit different. And so they um it's like kind of an awkward romance. The guy isn't so sure if he wants to be like with American her. Pie? Yeah, there's a lot of the- awkward <laughs> stuff. And the way that in American, it's not like pie, American pie girl is oh, f- girl is foreign and very sexual. Yeah, this is perfect. Mm-hmm. In a movie, uh, this American Pie. Superman. Yeah, it's on the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Or no, number one. Um, so she is on American Pie. She's horny and European. Is the pie horny? No, he's horny for the pie. Oh, okay. Yeah, he loves pie. Um, and But that the, in this movie, she is not foreign. Well, she's foreign to us, but and the movie is Korean, so she's Korean. <laughs> but she's very horny for him, and she's kind of... Like dumb, not necessarily she's a, she's dumb. A she's like spirit. a space she, cadet, huh? and it, I think it kind she's of. She's like first man. Mm, yeah, she's like a lot like first man. Yeah, she's like to me how. Um, she likes outer space, and she like kind of get. She just kind of stares off a lot. Yeah, and she like just like first man does. Yeah, well, he was getting ready for the moon. She, it's kind she of. She was like going that. to Africa. Huh? She's, about, she's about to go. You were there, Clay. She she's about to go to Africa. Yeah, and um, but she wants to him to uh, have sex with her first. So the guy does, and then when he does, he loves her. She goes to Africa and then comes back a couple weeks later, and now she's got a new boyfriend. Wait, you for, the whole time he's uh, he's feeding her cat while she's gone, and he's not sure if there is a cat, and he's also jerking off in her room. He does do that. Yeah. Well, that's that's good. Well, he's jerking off because it's a female. Which Wit was like, what is going on? What is he doing with his wiener? <laughs> and I go, Wit, let's step outside. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're going to dump the cum, it has to go into your beloved. Yes. Oh, true, true. That's something that Mitra often will tell me. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> she says, she often will say, I pay for your condo. <laughs> you give me, you dump your nut. Here. Dump, your, dump it. Yeah. <laughs> dump it out. And uh, Give me it all. <laughs> So, yeah, so... Well, dump out the scalding hot nut. <laughs> and, I, and so what she typically... She typically will read... I'll wait. She'll read back the transcribed set that she sent me. And so that's that what, can get hard. <laughs> Is that when he comes? Well, I... 
I, I, show, I read out his set to him that I typed out after my nursing shift. Uh-huh. And then I read out this, and then I show him um, how many rankings he's a star meter has increased, and then he's able to dump out the scalding hot nut um, yeah. into me. Yeah. And so, and that's, so that's why I'm, I'm just saying boys. That's why I'm not like yeah. trying to get horny with my boys is because I have that already in place in my life, which y'all don't have. Yeah. Well, I got right. that. I got yeah. rotted my movies. Yeah. That keeps yeah. you, that keeps Me and Clay have each other. <laughs> yeah. Always horny. So she goes, then she comes back, and he's feeding her cat. She comes back, and uh, she's got this new kind of like handsome, uh, <laughs> smart boyfriend. Who he's so handsome. Is very handsome and charming, and she likes him, And but she's still like trying to keep in touch with the main guy who she's known since childhood. And uh, the dude goes to the boyfriend's house, and they're talking, and the new fancy smart boyfriend is like, I like, uh, you know, he talks about greenhouses and the metaphor of an old greenhouse, okay. which is that, like, who cares about them? Yeah. No mm-hmm. one does mm-hmm. because they serve no purpose, and they don't leave, have any sort of mark on the earth anymore. Um, and then they keep hanging out and this guy's like I don't like this because I actually do like this girl that I got to nut in right before I went to Africa uh-huh. and now especially now that I see that she's with someone else and this guy doesn't even get her and then that guy brings her to uh, his little farmhouse where he lives in mm-hmm. and they hang out there together and get stoned and uh, whoa yeah Dude, so, so play some of Play some, some yeah. Woodstock. Some, some Woodstock. Welcome to Woodstock. Classic yeah. Woodstock. Here you go. And uh, perfect. They're smoking weed and stuff. And then he goes, "Can I tell you a secret?" The fancy dude. Uh huh. He goes, "I like every year to burn down an old greenhouse." And he's like, "That's yeah, crazy." Yeah, I do too, dude. It's called the freaking joint. Well, that's not what he means. No, yet. Huh? That's not what he means. Explain to me everything. Yeah. Or he doesn't this. say every year. He says every couple months I like to burn down burn a greenhouse. Down. And I'm going to burn one down really close to this, to your home. Mm-hmm. The guy goes, oh my God. Okay. Well, that's weird. And so he Why goes, play some awkward every music. morning he's running awkward. around trying to figure out what greenhouse this guy's going to burn down. But it, but guess what? What? Then he gets a phone call from the girl yeah. who hasn't been answering his calls. And she's screaming and yelling. Yeah. Scary. That that's true. kind of weird. Still looking for the greenhouses? That's awkward. So she, like, pissed? No, she's, like, running away from something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As if, like, it's like you running from the hospital to try to get to watch my set. <laughs> <laughs> so you can transcribe, of course. Oh, yeah, because it has to use my car. Yeah. yeah. Well, I use Mitra's Mazda to get to the Virgil. Yeah. Right. And it, that makes sense. Well, I only, yeah, I only get a solid show at the Virgil like a few times a year and uh-huh. I need to drive So, there. and like he needs a car every day of the year just in case he gets a call to perform at the right. Virgil. Yeah. Yeah, you should maybe think about getting a second and car just so, for you. Just so all the listeners out there, if you don't know what the Virgil is, it's a, it's a bar with Edison Bulbs in LA who's, and it's owned by a guy named Virgil. Virgil. And, mm-hmm. and Virgil, is um go off what is it he quick quick he, quick quick as a kid virgil is three feet tall and <laughs> that's right. like his brand is he's that he's a pig he's three feet tall um, so 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 that's why you know when you see mitra in the middle of the er is saying emergency emergency and he's like what what's gonna do three minutes <laughs> i gotta <I> run <laughs> Well, and I got my tape recorder, which is huge because yeah. it's it's vintage. We insist on vintage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah. like vintage. And she does when she transcribes. You she's, like that? You like that warm? Well, it's, go- it's from Urban Outfitters. Yeah, well, because uh-huh. Urban has that teal like color palette. You know, oh, like yeah, the yeah. teal and the seafoam green, seafoam and green, the like pale like yellow. Yeah, yeah. Who's my I, dad again? Yeah. Click. Don't be blasphemous. Don't be blasphemous. <laughs> um, but I also, when Mitra transcribes from the recording, she does it on a typewriter, and I make sure that she smokes a cigarette and has a glass of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. and like I have really, really intense asthma, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but I just, you still look cool. But it, it's yeah. a look. I'm yeah. about aesthetics, and that's the only way I'll post pictures of her on my Instagram. Yeah. Mm-hmm. is doing. Well, that. I'm in a, I'm in a negligee, yeah. and I'm smoking a cigarette, and mm-hmm. I'm drinking whiskey. Okay, so I'm gonna play some Tom Waits for you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm smoking a cigarette I'm wearing whiskey and I'm drinking negligee and (laughs) (laughs) so I'm sitting outside our house because I'm not allowed in done done typing and I'm typing as fast as I can and my carpal tunnel is really acting up because if you see Hunter S. Thompson he's always typing outside oh yeah yeah yeah. so okay so in the rest of the movie uh, it turns out that the guy is 
uh, the greenhouse is the girl, and he killed the girl. But you don't know that. Eh, maybe you don't you're know. Spo- that. You're, you're, spo- you're, you're I said what? spoilers we, a long time we ago. We're gonna okay. Well, if people spoil- are listening to a review, you spoiled the movie and you spoiled it wrong. Why? I don't know. I don't. I don't want to spoil it. It's anymore. like a mystery. It's a mystery. Well, this is my interpretation. Well, you didn't so say. It's not he a didn't spoil. really say what happens at the end, okay. though. No, that's yeah. So, in my opinion, yeah, okay. The greenhouse that the guy's talking about, which is a metaphor, yeah. is the, oh, keep, is girls who don't necessarily have a, a pig to swim with. A pig to swim with. Yeah, they, they don't have they don't have a family <laughs> or a pig to swim with. And uh, so she's swimming with the piggies. Yeah. yeah. So she is like. So Al Stallone sent her swimming with the piggies. To go to Alcatar? Just, to what? To go to Alcatar? To and well, to no, to he doesn't go to Alcatar, and that's <laughs> so. why you gotta watch it, because he never gets sent to Alcatar. Because he's too handsome and cool, so. Mm, only Uggos go to jail. True. Especially true. Alcatar. Yeah. yeah, Alcatar only only the. Well, because Alcatar's on a rock and away from people, because they don't want. That's where they send their ugly prisoners. Yeah. Because paparazzi will never catch them there. Hotties go to Rikers. Wait, yeah. did Nick Cage go to Alcatar? Um, he, well, he was yes. born there, right? He yes. was born in Alcatar. Okay. That's how he. That's why his last name's Cage. Oh, that makes like sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the reason it's connected to, and I, this, this is, is what, so hate Ashbury. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is very hate. This, you can hear the trolley go. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, <laughs> oh! No, I gotta get the trolley. Get out of the way! I gotta get I the trolley. trolley. <laughs> That's Clay rushing to the trolley. Uh, yes. Hey, anybody? I'm trying to get to Jerry Daly. Yeah, Jerry uh, Daly. Jerry Daly. So Jerry's Daly. Yeah. For the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to take the 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 streetcar. And this is my favorite of the Firefest documentaries ding, because ding. in it you get to see. And the reason I think that I, this is a prequel is because it involves young people and it takes place in, in the, the year, year 2017. 2017. Mm-hmm. Sure. And that's the same as Fire Festival. Wow. So you got there. It's like the Dark Knight trilogy. This is the Fire Festival trilogy, mm. pretty much. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it's and fi- they all came out one, two, three, just like Dark Knight. Yeah, and it's Hulu Fire, Netflix Fire, and Burning. But Burning's the prequel. Yeah. So you should watch Burning first. That'll okay. get you in the mood. Yeah, for then- the Fire Festival documentary. <laughs> so what are you? What are you? What are you giving this for? Well, I, you know, I wasn't so sure until um, the the uh, cat scenes, and yes. that made me give it a ten out of ten. Wait, what's the cat scene? There's a cat in the parking garage that is just the cutest little cat I've ever seen. It's a super cute cat. It's really adorable. Yeah, easy he, ten out of ten. He does something like this. Its name is Boyle. So you know, he just goes around. He goes. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's a, I think. I think that's the cat. Yeah. That's him. Yeah, and that's, I mean, all the, our listeners are probably nodding their head in agreement. Yeah, 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. Easy. What do you give it, Mitra? Well, it seems like there's, like, um, there. if there's a greenhouse, then there's probably, like, a couple of, um, like, there's, like, um, like a pot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, I give it 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. She's absolutely right. So, so far, we have two perfect scores. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to absolutely have to give this a 10 out of 10. It's just a great movie. I just, I loved every second of it. Okay, wait, what? What type of music? Um, I think you should play some kind of intense music that that does have a comedic edge to it with like, a jazz pop tinge. Okay, let me find the most. Intense. This is really intense. <laughs> okay, so here, my name is Clay Taylor. This is um um uh, Burning Fire, uh, a movie made in 2018, and it's about uh, 2017. Um, <laughs> starts with a female. Oh great, now I'm horny. Uh, where's my pie? <clears throat> Uh, me and Rod don't need a wife to get horny, huh, Rod? <laughs> Jerry's, uh, Jerry's Deli sells really good chocolate, huh, Rod? And for all that... <laughs> That's all you wrote? Uh, well, it's a short movie. Uh, it's not a short movie. Well, it is a short movie. It's like and let me tell you what happens in the well, movie. Uh, it starts with a female. I get horny. I find my pie. Me and um, Rod don't need wise. Wait. I have to get horny. Home Rod. Jerry's Deli sells really good chocolate. Home Rod. And for all that, uh, that's the description and what my thoughts are on that movie. I give this movie a 10 out of 10, which is a perfect score for a perfect Yep. Agreed. Okay. We and did it again. Did, this is probably my favorite film of uh, the 
2008, and what, what's what, what's the accol- accolade? Uh, Nothing. Like, uh, yeah, definitely one of the best films of 2018, and it got no yeah. nominations. What about Bohemian Rhapsody? Where's that at? Well, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, it's Time's Up um, era last year. Ti- hey, so, everyone, uh, Time's Up, everyone. Look at Brian Singer. Yeah, uh, so uh, Time... So it got uh, 96 nominations. Yeah, yeah. 96 yeah. nominations. Every best... It's like best uh, picture, absolutely. Okay. They, they're they not even going to do award shows. Yeah. Uh, what else we got going on? Well, I think right now would probably be a good opportunity for us to take a short break to do an ad. So, Clay, just pause... Music? Go ahead, pause the music. Okay, no, yeah. Now, now we'll tell me exactly what you want me to play. Um, play something that is like reminiscent of someone prancing through a field with a dress. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, Clay, I was thinking about something. What were you thinking about, pal? Well, about how <laughs> I like food, but I don't like to go to get the food. <laughs> Explain that to me one more time. I like the like food, food, but I don't want like to go to get, get the, the food. food. And so I found out about a th- Is there a way to solve that conundrum? Well, I found out about a thing called HelloFresh. There's nothing... Okay, let me just say my perspective right now. You just... <laughs> you have... You have shown me a problem that I think is unsolvable. Mm-hmm. Go on. Well, I found out about... <laughs> I don't think it's unsolvable because recently I, wrong, I discovered a thing called HelloFresh. You discovered this? Well, someone told me about it. Uh-huh. Uh, actually, yeah. And HelloFresh is actually a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can cook, eat, and enjoy all on your own without having to go to get the stuff. Okay, what about this? What? Let's say scenario. Okay. I'm freaking starving. Uh-huh. I'm at my house. I don't want to leave my house. Yes. What do I do? Well, you just wait for a knock on the door and there's your box of food and then you go put it on the stove and you do what the box tells you to do and you slam it and you eat it. So box is king. Box is basically king and your belly is bay uh-huh. and <laughs> king feeds bay. So king's, king box feels belly bay. Yeah. And that's what this product it does, huh? Yes. I mean, wh- I have goals for 2019. Me too. Okay. And one of my goals See is... See more movies. Other than seeing more movies, uh-huh. but I can do this while I'm eating my delicious HelloFresh, is that I want to enjoy... Wait, you're getting me hungry right now. Yeah, so please... Let me just play some uh, hungry music. Yeah. Okay. So one of my goals is just enjoying delicious home-cooked meals with HelloFresh, okay? Yes. Because HelloFresh makes it easy. I can freaking conquer my kitchen in 2019. You could be really stupid and do this. You could literally be... <laughs> Dumber than a rock covered in dirt, and HelloFresh <laughs> is easy for you. So this is a product for dumb people. No. No. <laughs> HelloFresh is a product for anybody, but also for anybody. It's inclusive. It's inclusive for very <laughs> stupid people. Okay. Like a, you described it way better than I did. Yeah. So HelloFresh could be a Harvard grad, or could it, it could be a dirty little bridge troll. Okay. <laughs> anyone, can anyone, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. Anyone in between. Yeah. yeah. And that's what makes HelloFresh nice. Yeah. Also, HelloFresh uh, didn't. They uh, don't vote for Trump. <laughs> I put it. Yeah. So uh, with with HelloFresh, it's easy and enjoyable to enjoyable, cook. Yeah. Okay. You they give you the pre measured ingredients and they and they're give part you, of the resistance. Yeah. <laughs> and they're part of the good fight. And I know that's difficult for you to talk about because you're a centrist. I don't. Uh-huh. I don't I don't go too. I don't. I'm not a left extremist. I'm but, not a right extremist. But I, it's right here, sitting in the middle. But, and I just don't. Nothing. Nothing's too crazy. Okay, but Clay. And that's why I love HelloFresh. <laughs> no, I think this is where you're wrong. I think HelloFresh Hello Fresh. is one of those okay. extremes. So HelloFresh is a burning nut. Yeah, HelloFresh, you're impossible to be a centrist about because that okay. is all the way extreme to the best Hello possible Fresh quality. I mean, they're and gi- reason. Clay, they're, <laughs> Clay, they're giving you a six-step pictured recipe card, and it's delivered straight to your door each week, okay? And a special insulated box, which is very important. Clay? Um, Are we done? No! 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 Okay. You gotta do it! <laughs> Clay, you know what I want to do? I'm getting hungry, dude. You I know what I want to do? Cook this crap. And those, and when you said the pictures, those were the idiots, huh? The what? <laughs> That's what they, the pictures. No, they just tell you how to do it. <laughs> okay. I'm having fun here. I, you I know. know. Clay, do you know what I want to do? <laughs> what do you want to do, dude? I want to make deliciousness part of my every week. Okay, sure. And you know how I do that? 
How do you do I this? get three delicious plants to choose from. <laughs> okay. That's classic, which is yeah. your meat and potatoes. Right. That's veggie, which right. is like no, to, yeah. only the potatoes and the, potatoes, the vegetables. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then that's family, which is like a lot of food for a lot of people. people. Like a boy and a girl and a mom and a dad. Uh-huh. Classic family. Uh, classic family. <laughs> right. And why I think that's important is because you can switch between these types of things okay. when your tastes change. Right. Um, okay, Clay? <laughs> I get it, dude. Clay, okay? All right. And I've had some fucking music. Well, I've had personal experience with this. Have you really? Yes. I get this stuff (laughs) coming to my house. Okay, so I came to your house. And I go into my kitchen. Uh I pop on (laughs) the special features DVD of of The Dark Knight. Dark Knight. And I... What makes Joker so crazy? I (laughs) was. Did you find out? There is, in the mind of the Joker, the <laughs> famous special feature where it just talks about okay. what Christopher Nolan wanted from the and Joker. And what are you doing? And while I'm doing that, I'm roasting my veggies, veggies. I'm cooking my beef, nice. and I'm spreading my gravy. Okay. And then I'm enjoying, but and then by the time the food is ready, I can actually okay, watch, watch the, movie the movie and dive into right. my delicious, just hot, food, piping, food. delicious, hot healthy food. food with HelloFresh. Okay. Okay? All right. And that's why I personally love it and recommend it to everybody. How would you recommend it? Well, I think the best thing that you could possibly do right now is uh-huh. go to hellofresh.com. Oh, you like, you're really silly. You could go to, is, I urge you pays. right now, okay. I urge you to go to hellofresh.com slash A-A-C-R-80. That's hellofresh.com slash A-A-C-R-80. Just like in- our podcast, American Arts Culture Review. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> 80. You forgot the 80. 80, which is the. The, the year my dad was born, and it's the how it's a perfect score for a movie. movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Yeah. So Here's the thing. go to go to, to hellofresh.com/slash a a c r eighty. Yes, and, and, and put in the promo code a a c r eighty. And don't don't Woo! put in don't put in WTF pod like this is the, these are the people that we're trying to beat we're trying to beat the cat race we gotta here. beat him this, that's <laughs> another topic that Clay's not a centrist so, on is beating the cat race we gotta beating beat the, the cat, cat race but he's a he's a leftist loon and just uh, how about how about you don't go crazy how about you just see everyone's perspective you don't do a damn thing oh, I agree and <laughs> that's our ad thank you Mitra thank you. <laughs> and uh, back to the podcast okay. <laughs> Wow, that was a quick break. Wow. Was a quick break. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We just have to we like record the podcast and right. then we just plop them in. Uh, we put, record the ads and plop them in. Yeah. So, uh, yes. So it's a classic podcast thing where like we actually only went on a break for one second. Now you're seeing how the dang sausage is made. Yeah, uh, let me play some sausage music. <laughs> well, let's play Thank some you. sausage, sausage music, music because there's something we haven't even touched on with my girlfriend, uh-huh. and that is that Mitra, you have a lot of skills. You're a nurse. Yeah. Uh, you're really good at the financial stuff, uh, which is money. Yeah, I pay for everything you do. And well, yeah, because you support my career, yeah. career and my creative stuff. Uh-huh. But every year, and you have a great relationship with your dad, who can't stop jumping on his, block, <laughs> his bed. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna uh, hurt his head. Well, he has. He has. That's a damn shame. <laughs> yeah. But he's always got a band aid on his head. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I bet you know the best medicine with that is is some classic Whitmer Thomas statement. Well, that is typically the best medicine. I will go and I'll rehearse my sets in front of her dad, who is always getting a fresh band aid. <laughs> yeah. So when he's getting, when I'm applying the bandage, Wit will usually run his half hour every day. Yeah. Uh-huh. For my Comedy Central presents that I hope to get, mm-hmm. and uh, they're usually laughing and laughing. Um, but another little treat that I like to give Mitra, if I do get something. Mm-hmm. Every time I'm rewarded from the Hollywood industry, I'm rewarded, you know, with, with a, a new job or something exciting like a screener. I'll decide <laughs> if I want to reward my girlfriend. Which of one course, screeners? classic. No, I will give her a screener, or if if it's not uh, award season, I'll let her watch a video. And guess what company makes these VHS? videos? VHS? No, a video on YouTube. The VHS company? <laughs> or if it's not on YouTube, sometimes we have to go to Daily Motion. 
And so I'll go to Daily Motion and I'll always type in her favorite thing of all, which is Disney. Disney. Yeah. Oh. That's classic. Yeah, because Disney's in great. Classic. Let me play some classic. Uh, you might be like Ariel, okay. Mer- Mermaid. Okay, so what, that's your favorite. You Ariel like the mermaid? or Mermaid? Do the Mermaid. So let me do some more quantity. Thank you. Uh, so, Mitra, you just go off about how much you love Disney. Well, so I love Disney because I get to go there once a year. I'm allowed to go there once a year. And I get to, I, I take I take my dad and Wit to Disney every single year. Yeah. My favorite thing is probably meeting the princesses. I love to meet <laughs> the princesses. You like the Disney girl. I love I love the Disney Girl, so I love meeting Disney Girl and get like a picture with Disney do you, Girl. Do you have a favorite princess? Yeah. Um, so my favorite princi- <clears throat> Disney princess is probably the one that's in the car at first, and then she's not by the end of the movie because mm-hmm. she has met her husband. She loves car princess. So the one who's in the car that goes away when it becomes morning. Oh, yes. oh yeah, the car yeah. princess. Car princess, yeah. famous for her shoe. Yeah. She has to get oh, home. Shoe. She yeah, has yeah. to get home on time before she meets the boy. She, she yeah. meets the boy. She meets the boy. She has so car princess has shoe and then it becomes morning and then the car she doesn't have a car anymore. And so I like to meet the princess and I'll take the picture of the princess and then and then you know pretty much the whole time like I'm not allowed to talk to any of the princes. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, if your well, boyfriend I, is there you can't because, talk to a man. Well, it just it doesn't make sense for the narrative in my mind for me to it's not really. I'm not like taking ownership of Mitra. I just uh-huh. think that it's no. Like, we're feminist. I'm. Uh, he's, he's well, we know. Yeah. I'm yeah. an ally, and I am feminist. And I'm not. I'm. Not, it's not that Mitra. I don't like Mitra looking at these hot princes. I, it's just that in my mind, I. She's already found her prince. What's your favorite? Uh, <laughs> what's your, uh, <laughs> so why would she like to fulfill this no, yeah. this like ridiculous Disney dream? Uh huh. She's already done it that. It doesn't make sense. What's yeah. your favorite? Uh, Unless I'm somehow like an evil prince, which would never make any sense. That's insane. Uh, what's your favorite uh, Disney? My favorite Disney animal is Disney Bear. Disney Bear is really good. <laughs> You're talking about Duffy? <laughs> the mascot from Disney, yeah. the Disney Bear. And what's your yes. favorite Disney Bear thing? My favorite Disney Bear thing is probably the, his little shimmy. Yeah, he goes. He goes I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, maybe and I, like, I like when he gets to sing and hang out with his friends. Oh yeah, what's one of his songs? Um, welcome to the woods, it is Disney Bear. I am walking through the woods, I'm Disney Bear. I am in the woods, I am a Disney Bear. Oh, woods where we're in a Disney Bear. And it is good to be the Disney Bear. Oh yeah, yeah, I am Disney Bear. I'm walking through the woods so fast, like Jimmy Chicken. Also, there's a squirrel too. We are woods, yeah, Disney Bear. Oh. Yeah. And see, okay, so I, I hear this song all the time, because yeah. once a week, me will play it on Daily Motion. And then <laughs> she's always obsessed with going immediately to the Disney Bear ride yeah. with me and her dad with the uh-huh. Band-Aid on his head. I love yeah. Disney Bear ride. <laughs> Big yeah, Disney Bear ride. I, you know, here's my thing. I love the classic cart. I love I love when you get the Disney dog in the same room when they do this. And you can just let dogs and mm-hmm. duck be dog and dog. dog. And dog. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, it's so, beautiful. They just cohabitate. Uh-huh. So uh, today I brought in one of my favorite episodes of uh, starring Disney dog. Now, in this classic a uh, Disney dog episode. Um, Disney dog is um, sleepwalk, okay. and he sleepwalk. He sleepwalks right into a uh, a grocery store, and he thinks it's his kitchen. <laughs> so this is a classic thing. So um, let me play you a clip from my favorite favorite uh, Disney uh, dog cartoon called Sleepwalking Dog. And here we go. <laughs> 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 Okay, he, he's like, he gets out of bed. <laughs> he was... Right. What's well, a funny... Cause... Oh, oh, oh! Now he's up. He's walking into the grocery store. That's not your That's not your kitchen, you dead dog. <laughs> and oh, now he's just making some pancakes in the pancake <laughs> aisle. That's not your kitchen, you dumb, dumb dog. <laughs> And wait, he's back in bed. Yeah, that's a classic and episode. And he just gets back yeah. in bed. <laughs> and he eats some pancakes and gets back in bed. And I think that was no animated. That was animated by one of the original Disney animators. Uh, yeah, that's Will from Disney. like yeah. 1994. It's like yeah. Oob, Oob Works. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a that's what really brings back a lot of memories. Yeah. I'm 18. I'm walking down the stalky <laughs> road. Well, this, uh, that, that brings me to the, another point, which is that this is the first time me- I've announced that I've been with Mitra, and it's because she just turned 18 um, <laughs> oh, in January. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
That's cool. That's well, cool. We d- I didn't tell anyone that I was with her before. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you told anyone, it would it's, be illegal. But, right. But right. you don't tell anyone. It's legal. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not owning the gun that is illegal. It's shooting it. Right. Well, and right. So before, not, before yeah. she was 18, you were just grooming her to be your girlfriend. <laughs> I, want, I was grooming her to be my perfect girlfriend. Yeah. Right. And like, you so, know, it's like something that maybe. This is well, why I had to see how Drake tall does. she was going to get. I wanted to see how tall she was going to get before I made it. Right, official. so because he wants to be able to put a two liter of Pepsi on my head and still be able to drink the straw. <laughs> that was a huge break, you know, like that was a deal breaker for me. If Mitra grew too tall to where if I put the two liter of Pepsi on her head and couldn't drink it perfectly without having to bend down, I, I just don't think I could have done it. Well, so I pretty much like stopped having um, protein for mm-hmm. a couple of years because what made me when I was like nine? I would give, well. I would give I would give her a protein treat, which was on us <laughs> on Sundays. I was get, I'd give her edamame. Right. Oh, okay. So that's sort of my protein treat. <laughs> yeah. It's my yeah. favorite dessert now. Yeah. But now you're like now you're for sure not going to grow anymore. Yeah. So no, no, I've, we've made sure that won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know binding. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yes. I didn't do that, <laughs> but I did lower all the roofs of her house. Yeah, so she just kind of has the like roof is lower. My, my roof ceiling. is really low, yeah. <laughs> so she just kind but, of. But the like, walls uh, don't go up. Uh, go up to their normal height. It's not uncomfortable. It's just you. You have to hunch down all the time. Yeah, and that's a lot of and the reason why, why the dad has the band aid on the head. <laughs> that's why you don't visit. And he stills on the bug bed. <laughs> well, I don't like to go to her place because. And because the uh, ceiling's so small, and that's another and reason the- why I she has to pay my rent because I'm not going to her small ceiling place. <laughs> Right. And plus, your place has all the DVDs. And yeah. my place has the DVDs. And a lot of people are probably wondering, how is she a nurse if she just turned 18? And that's because I trained her to be really, really smart when she was a, a yeah. kid. Yeah, after, after she came back from the uh, nursing school, you would tell her what a Band-Aid is, and you would go, I did a good job, didn't I? Yeah, well, first I made her go to the war in Iraq. Okay. <laughs> and she served. <laughs> She's one, the youngest right. person to serve. Of course. And then she came back, and that's because she went to the war, she was able. Sorry, sorry I know that I just gave right. away your whole story, and I don't know if you're comfortable. Let me play some music from the classical majority. <laughs> Which is not, I mean, that's a different war. But you, that's not the same war? That's a, it was a, that's a... Jake Gyllenhaal? Well, Jake funny that you should mention the jarhead thing, because I call Mitra two-liter head. Oh, because... <laughs> it's nice. Because the two-liter fits perfectly on her head. Well, also because we carved out a little, like, we've, uh, it's gone on my head so many times there's like a little divot in oh, the top. Oh, that's so yeah. cute. Yeah. And I do sweet. think it's really cute. Yeah. That's where I put the jizz. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you put the jizz in the two liter tube? Well, we rewired my oh, tube so divot. that I can get pregnant from my divot. Yeah. <laughs> Which is something that we're talking about, but it's like... I mean, that's like... Anyway, so I'm pretty much really excited to transcribe all the raw footage from this <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Finally, it's about her. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, Mitra, we, I had the audience ask, or some fans ask some questions. Would you feel comfortable answering some of them? Sure. Okay. Um, let's hope uh, these are really good. So, yeah. They, <laughs> I mean, we're hoping. We're really hoping that these uh, are going to be really good. Okay. Okay. Wait. What? Okay. Really? Give me the best, nastiest questions you can find. Get, yeah. Right, make I'm them gonna, freaking nasty. Yeah, make them freaking nasty. Get em, I don't care right now. Get them nasty. I'm, I'm taking I'm ripping the tape off my mouth. I won't say what I don't call Okay. And this, you can be unleashed. Okay. All of us, we can be completely unleashed yeah. right now. We can get unhinged, unleashed. Don't ham, baby. Let's go! Hey! Right. Callan Graham asks, I just lost my job. What movie should I watch? Just lost your job. What movie should I watch? Uh, what's a classic? No. Falling Down. Falling oh, Down. Falling Down. Joel oh, Schumacher. Yeah. Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mitra's honest favorite movie. <laughs> it's my real favorite. One of my real faves. <laughs> I, I, uh-huh. I don't know. I mean, sometimes I like a stroll, so I would, I would recommend Baby Does New York. Okay, yeah, Baby yeah. Does New York. Okay, um, uh, Fab X Parker. Okay. Do you think? Sorry. Do you think the Go walk? On. Do you think the Walking Dead is dead? Come on. Uh, I don't. I haven't seen the newest season. Why, why would he bring a Walking Dead? I'm sorry, man. I I was just picked this question. Listen, Fab X. I I really appreciate your question, and I'll answer in more detail over Instagram. Um, honestly, I haven't seen the new season, but I'm sure it's great. I'm happy to be part of the show. Let me play some. Walking uh, Dead. Let me play some Walking Dead music. This is the show that Wit was in. Wit was famously in The Walking Dead. Yeah. He loves it. He'll talk about it all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
All right, Jupes. <laughs> You're the one reading the questions, my guy. You're rushing me, and I'm not actually getting to read Don't them. Don't rush him. Jupes Scoops, our friend, asks, is the cinema art? Why is, what, why, what is art? The cinema is art. Okay? Is, the film, if, maybe... if art is cinema. I think, I believe every frame is a painting. Yeah, what do you think, Mitra? I think that um, if it is printed off onto the picture, then it's art. Yeah, true, true. Give me a real, give me a word. Get some give juicy. Give me one that I can really get a, bite into. Get a really, okay. all right, get, the real. Okay, so this is, okay, so before you tell me this question. This better this be juicy. This going to be really good. This okay. is going to be the juiciest one. The real ones. Olive Garden 69. Wait, everyone just pause right here. Let's just really. Okay, the real Olive Garden 69 asks, who's the best pedophile director? <laughs> Uh, who's the best? Here's the thing. Roman Polanski did. Um, oh uh, he did. Uh, Chinatown's really good. Knife in the Water is really good. Yeah, Rosemary Baby. Rosemary Baby is a classic. Uh, we're talking about Mia Farrow, and then you're gonna go to Woody Allen. Oh, uh, then yeah, talking about Woody Allen. You got Hannah and her sister is really good. You got Annie Hall, which is a classic. What Manhattan is that so really good. That really sweeped up the town. A Manhattan, uh, Manhattan what? murder mystery. This guy loves New York. He loves all the boroughs. What do you think, Mitra? I mean, wouldn't be pedophiles if there wasn't Brian Singer in there. So yeah. Well, that what well, we know about the uh, Brian S- Rhapsody, the best movie there is. I I think Brian Singer is going to take the cake. Uh, I think Brian Singer is the best current in the running pedophile (laughs) director. Uh, Because sometimes you pedophile too much and you're not allowed back in the country. Right. Sometimes. Sometimes you're you're allowed in the country and you're allowed allowed front row and center at the Oscars. Hey, mom. All right. uh, Shannon... Fahey. 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 Yeah, Shannon is our friend. Sorry, Shannon, I didn't say your name right. Uh, what do I wear to cinema? What's a good cin- for me personally? I always bring a sweater because I get cold. Oh, it gets cold in there. You're gonna need a sweater. Yeah, I bring my stiffest jeans because you know I don't get horny. When girls come on the screen. Yeah, yeah anytime time you see a girl, you get pretty horny. Uh, String bikini. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so wait's request, but also so all my hair grows back because I'm cold. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, give, me one, give me a juicy one, puppy. Okay, um, Mighty Olivia asks, does Sundance matter? Um, I would say so. Yeah, I think it does definitely matter, and I wish it didn't, but it does. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Mika? Well, we have friend Alex Kavitsky. He's there. He's a, he's a, he's a, yeah, he's we, a friend of the pod. It's cool. Uh, yeah, it's cool, and it's fun, and it's a great uh, thing. If you get in, it's a great accomplishment, and you should yeah. be proud of yourself. What do you think, Mitra? I'm just there to sell T-shirts. Well, I have my merch, which is a shirt with my headshot on it and an autograph. Yeah, so I was at Sundance this weekend selling Wits merch. Uh, I, wasn't a, I wasn't actually invited, and uh, neither was Mitra, but I did have her just go to the Utah airport. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in one scene. Oh, yeah? You, you're in Sundance? Dance. Oh, well, keeping things Clay, uh, Danny Bet 4 asks, did Clay take piano lessons or is he Bach reincarnate? Hey, 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 you tell me. Okay, another Clay <laughs> question. Prettier Online asks, how important is the role of editing in a film? Um... Uh, I mean, it's, 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 I'm talking about Birdman. It's not. It's not. It, you don't need it at all. Sometimes you don't need editing. Look at Birdman. He's flapping around the whole screen. They don't do one cut. Uh, Mick Nanley asks, "Do you enjoy the Kiss from a Rose music video?" No, yeah, Mick. Nick, question. I don't because it's just Batman Forever, and that's Honestly, not the Dark Knight. I think about it. I only think about the that yes one. I mean, I think it's a pretty good music video. Was it a UPS it's, or better? It's it's st- sealed. Dance in front of the sign, but yeah, that's great. Okay. Okay, maybe you're right. Uh, all right, our friend Lorene. I'll let's Give me end a really with really fucking juicy one. I'm let's gonna, end I'm with this. Be savage. We don't have to end. Yeah, well, we're okay. gonna get savage on this all one. All right, we don't have to end. Okay, fine. Our friend Lorene asks, oh, okay. "What is good right now?" I'd say, "What is good? It burning, burning." And uh, what else is good? What's good? Burning. What's bad? Burning. Bernie Sanders. <laughs> you're too far left, you you nut, you new, you uh, and you know who's all crazy? Uh, that the uh, the the uh, the the the, the guy in the orange house. Oops, I mean White House. I mean <laughs> Donald Trump. Cheeto. 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 You're, oh, you're acting no. crazy too. How about we all just meet in the middle and just get nothing done? Next question. Uh, sleeping Sleeping Loops asks, what is your favorite short film you made of these three? Oh, wait, what are you, of us? Your favorite short What's film of these three? This? Okay. Uh, it does he, does he rattle off our films? Yeah. That's not good. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Niet Snee 64. Apoc- what did you say to me? Uh, Apocalypse Now or Barry Lyndon. Uh, uh, I like Apocalypse Now. Are those restaurants? Now. <laughs> yeah, one, 
<laughs> What's your favorite thing to order at Barry Linden? Yeah. Milkshake. <laughs> milkshake. The milkshake? Absolutely. Well, what do you get at Apocalypse Now? Fries. Yeah. So milkshake is better than fries? Yeah, it depends. If I want savory, I go to Apocalypse Now. If I want sweet, then I go to Bill. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the. I would say, let's say Barry. I want to say Barry, okay? Okay, this is one good for Mitra. Mega Wolf asks, who is your dream contestant for the next season of ABC's Dancing with the Stars? Um, my next dream contestant for a season of uh, Miss with the Stars, President Cheeto, because he came out of the White House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out of the White House? <laughs> what are you doing too crazy? Let's just like stop Get him out of there. Get uh, back on TV and dance with the stars. Definitely, we definitely know who it is, so let's say it. three, two, one. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Alex Whit Winter. Oh. <laughs> we are. Of course, Whit Stillman. Yeah, Whit Stillman. Um,. Okay. What and did you say? I said Alex Winter. What? Alex Winter. Who's that? He's uh, he played uh, Bill in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. That'd be really good too. Oh, that would be really good. Um, last one. Last one. Fucking end it on a hot one. Like Nolton Bourne asks, in yeah. four words or less, why is Chris Nolan the best director of all time? Uh, why? So serious. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. That's it. All right, I gotta go to a shift. See you guys later. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being on the podcast, Mitra. No problem. Um, you're my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> that's been another episode of the American Arts and Culture Review. My name's Whitmer Thomas. <laughs> Hit it, Clay. Uh, please like and subscribe to our podcast. And make sure to uh, uh, buy our dirty merch. Buy I, the, our merch. The merch is still up there. It's teesprings.com slash American Arts and Culture Review. There's some dashes in there. It's in the, it's in the episode info. And I'm um, telling you, these reviews. Oh, also in the episode info is our HelloFresh thing where you click on that so you, you, we can defeat the uh, that, that lefty loon, Mark Marin. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, also review our podcast and uh, tell you. Oh yeah, do it. Review, uh, review the podcast. Um, any movies that we do, we'll read them. If it's a good review, we'll read them. Hey, Trumpies. Any movies? Any movies you want to review? Review it. Don't review it in letterbox. Review it in, the, in the, the, the 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 the. Give us a ten out of ten in the uh, <laughs> review and review the movie there, and we'll read your review. Why not? I'm I'm, I'm desperate for this crap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Day, day. You guys stay cool. Day, day, Bye. Day, day. <laughs> Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original Dog. podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.